driving one of the dirt tracks that wind their way through an old volcano for 35 kilometers east of Melbourne. Below the tall eucalyptus trees are small creeks flying through fern gullies. Mount Dandenong stands at 633 metres and it's at Olinda where we take up the story about the mountain's long geological history which is measured in millions of years. 300 million years ago, Victoria was closer to the South Pole. Actually, it was joined to the Antarctic. The vegetation of this time period was very different. Strange plants dominated the landscape. A number of active volcano vents in the area were all draining magma from a huge chamber that produced four lava flows. The first lava field flowed as far north as Coldstream. The second spread southwards past Ferntree Gully. The third lava flow was a thinner one that formed a platform between the first two mentioned flows. The fourth was another thick lava flow, full of volcanic ash that reached as far as Emerald. It's hard to believe anything survived those lava flows, but what happened next was truly devastating. It's unknown how long it took before the lava stopped flowing, but when the underground chamber eventually drained, it could no longer support the landscape above and the surface collapsed, creating a cauldron. That instantly caused an eruption that would have thrown the landscape along with the dust and gas high into the atmosphere. The debris that didn't float away on the wind would have fallen back into the cauldron and fused together with magma and cooled. It's this debris that formed the Dandenong Ranges, which are believed to have once been three times higher than we see today but after millions of years, it has slowly eroded and collapsed. Mount Dandenong is often referred to as an extinct volcano, but the whole range is more the result of the cauldron filling with debris after that huge eruption, which was one of the most spectacular geological events ever to occur in Victoria. One hundred and seventy million years ago, the southern part of Australia had a short summer where the sun never set for weeks and long periods of darkness during the winter. The landscape would have consisted of primitive versions of ferns that now grow in the southern forest. I'm on one of the walking tracks up Mount Dandenong. I come up here quite often, there's a lot of ferns around this area and it's particularly nice and quiet. Except for the birds, it's a lot of bird sounds. You don't see these very often here. The last time these creatures roamed the earth was during the Jurassic period. Well, that was interesting. I decided to set up a few remote cameras overnight to see if any wildlife visits the falls. Fossils of Australian dinosaurs are scarce and often only a single bone is found. Comparisons from finds of more complete skeletons in other countries has given scientists an estimate of what our dinosaurs probably look like. The fossils of this raptor was first found in Argentina and its features are in many ways similar to the Australian raptors. So it's not unreasonable to believe our raptors went about their daily lives in a similar way. In fact, the dinosaurs of Victoria at that time had to endure much colder conditions than any dinosaur that lived on the other continents. <laughs> 